Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest. Of most excellent fancy. I've got a skeleton in my cupboard. I really have. I used it when I was doing my surgical exams years ago. It was called the primary FRCS. It was the most difficult set of exams I've ever done. You had to know everything about anatomy, physiology and pathology. There were written papers, multiple choice and of course the dreaded viva. It was brutal. 90% of candidates failed, but in order to get on to the next stage of your training, you had to pass. Some people did it dozens of times, and it certainly tested your will to become a surgeon. Gently, man, gently, you're not making bread. Don't forget to be a successful surgeon. You need the eye of a hawk, the heart of a lion, and the hands of a lady. Have you ever wondered how it feels to cut somebody open and do surgery? Lots of people have asked me this over the years. It's a tough question to answer. What is it about surgeons that makes them do it? Keep watching and I'll tell you all about it. There are thousands of videos on YouTube about hip surgery, about the operation itself and the surgeons who do it. If you believed all of them, you'd think that hip surgery is the most straightforward thing in the world. Well, sometimes it is, but for most people, it's quite an ordeal, physically and mentally, and that's just the surgeon. So what are surgeons really like underneath the suit, the mask and the gown? Maybe you don't want to know but I'll bet you do really. I've always been fascinated by science and engineering. When I was a child, I used to love to take things apart to see how they worked. I wasn't always very good at putting them back together again. My father had been a pilot and my grandfather worked in a laboratory in a chocolate factory. So I was brought up surrounded by science. I couldn't get enough of programs like Tomorrow's World and Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds are go. I had my appendix out when I was 10 and that was the event that triggered my interest in all things medical. Later on, my imagination was fired up by science fiction. The Invaders. A Quinn Martin production. Horror movies. And of course, medical dramas and comedies. Morning, Doctor. Hello. Could we, by a superhuman effort of will, concentrate on the patients, Doctor? I was all set up to read physics at university, but just before I left school, I decided I wanted to be a doctor. I had to reapply to university, and during my year off, I worked as an operating theatre porter. I saw surgery being done, and that was it. I had no doubt at all that that's what I wanted to be. I can still remember the first time that I did an appendectomy on my own. I was a senior house officer at the Royal United Hospital in Bath. We'd been up most of the night, and dawn was breaking. The senior registrar said, there's an appendix to do. I'm knackered and I'm going home. You'll be fine. It was thrilling and I was completely hooked. A few years later, when I lived in Australia, I learned to fly. After a few hours training with the instructor, the time came for my first solo. We'd done a few circuits of the airfield, practicing touch and go landings. After the last landing, he stopped. He said to me, over to you now, I'm going to get out and you're going to do a circuit on your own. That mix of fear and excitement was just like the time when I'd done my first solo appendix. What made it all work was great training, hard work, and knowing that somebody trusted me enough to be able to do it. After I landed the plane, I was bursting with excitement. Thinking about it later, I realized that I'd learned a lot about myself. I suppose you'd call it insight, a feeling of confidence in my ability. If it had gone wrong and I'd crashed, I might have died, but I didn't, obviously. I did it on my own, and that feeling has never left me. So how does it feel to me to do surgery, to cut somebody open? Well, it's amazing, it's terrifying, and it's utterly compelling. But you know what's even better than that? Seeing my patients get on with their lives again after their hip surgery. In my next video, I'll tell you more about my journey as a hip surgeon, from doctor in the house to all the world's a stage. Thanks for watching.